the position, the three-dimensional position, could be a function of t. It could have components that are functions of t. Change what time it is, you might change any or all of them, and that puts us in a different spot relative to the origin so that we would need a different vector to describe it. Everything that we said about the time dependence and the velocity and the displacement and the acceleration still holds true. The time derivative of the position vector is the velocity vector as a function of time. Derivative operator moves through the sum, we get an x component. Um, d by dt of rx of t in the i plus d by dt of ry of t in the j plus d by dt of rz of t in the k d by dt of r sub x of t. Well, that's, that's how we actually define, we didn't call it r sub x, we just called it x, but that's the horizontal component, the x component of the velocity in the i direction. That's in the y, and this is in the z. Oops. It's a T. So we can use the same math that we developed in the previous videos to talk about the velocity. I could write this again and talk about the acceleration. Um, there's not much use to doing so. It just takes up more space. Uh, but we could take another derivative and talk about the time derivative of the x velocity, which would get us the x acceleration, the time derivative of the y velocity, which would get us the y acceleration, the time derivative, and so on. I have, I will link to two separate, uh, two other YouTube videos that um, I'd like you to watch. And um, I'm going to claim that the punchline of those two videos is that when we are considering motion in two dimensions under the influence of gravity, in other words, throwing something, that the horizontal and the vertical motion can be considered independently. And that's a, a matter of experiment. We can show that that's apparently true, uh, but it makes sense. Uh, things don't fall to the right, they fall down because apparently gravity pulls them down. So, whatever would cause them to fall, we'll call that gravity and it only works in the y direction. Apparently, um, there isn't anything to cause things to fall horizontally because nothing does, you know, these markers stay put, they don't fall to the right, that's weird. So we can consider horizontal and vertical motion separately with all of our kinematics, we'll assume that if we can ignore the air, and so there's another, another video I'll link you to, if we can ignore the air, then the vertical acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down and the horizontal acceleration is zero. Because gravity is a vertical thing and there's nothing doing horizontally, as long as we can ignore the air.
okay, cool. That's it for this segment. I think maybe we need one more. 